Uh, so we are in uh, a brand new month t uh, tonight, beginning a new month. It's the month of Av. Uh, so we're about to close out the month of Tammuz. Uh, anybody recall what the significant s significance was uh, of Tammuz last month? This is a test. Does anybody know? All right. If you know, well, Tammuz begins the summer season. Summer season in Israel, three months, Tammuz, Av, and Elul, roughly. Uh, it's uh, June, July, and August here in the United States. Uh, and so we are reminded uh, that the, the days are long. And summertime for the Jewish people often reminds them uh, of the harsh realities, particularly in the next month coming up, in the month of, uh, month of Av. Uh, if you think back to the lessons, go back to the winter, of, to Hanukkah. Uh, in the dead of winter, we see that there's always light shining even in the darkness. Uh, but Tammuz teaches us the inverse of this, that there's darkness in the light. In the secular world, what, is, what does summer mean? It means vacation, no school, barbecues, carefree afternoons. But if you look at the ancient Jewish calendar, you can see that the scorching light of summer can also bring deep and challenging lessons about mourning and grief. Police officers in Israel will tell you that crime rates are highest in the summer. A sharp example of what the Hebrew calendar is trying to explain. The rays of the sun are at their harshest. The passion for the unrelenting sun is powerful. And if it's misdirected, It'll cause us humans to do what we do. And what do we do? We, we get overheated. We become impatient. We're quick to anger. And the light of the sun can become blinding and very limiting. This is why uh, in Tammuz it tells us to pray, uh, pay very close attention uh, to the heat of the month. If it's undirected, it can be brutal, intense, and cause us uh, to lose ourselves in anger, like Moses did uh, when he struck the rock impatiently, demanding water from God. You know, even Moses got overheated. But fortunately, it's not all heat uh, and anger and uphill climbing, and uh, we can here tonight, we can rejoice in the month of Av. Uh, but there are some significant things that have happened uh, to the Jewish people during the month of Av. In particular, in particular, on the ninth of Av, or Tishba Av, as it's called. Let me remind you of some of the things that happened uh, on Tishba Av. Both temples were destroyed. The spy report. In the year thir uh, 1131 BCE, the spies returned on the 8th of Av. On the 9th of Av, people cry out. They insist that they would rather go back to Egypt than be slaughtered by the Canaanites. Hmm. Sounds like the Lord might uh, be testing us also. You know, I, I, when, I, when I heard this, I was just thinking, you know, knock at the door and, and somebody says, have you taken the vaccine or not? <laughs> uh, not understanding that the Lord uh, is over all the lists that they say you're going to go on a list. He's the administrator uh, of all the lists. It says in his word, I will never leave you or forsake you no matter what. Will you trust me, church? And it reminds us, 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples to us. And they were written for our admonition. They were written as an authoritative warning by God himself upon whom the ends of the world are come. These examples we have uh, in history uh, remind us to take heed. 
Another thing that happened was something called the Rhineland Massacres. Uh, it was during the German Crusade of 1086. There was a series of mass murders of Jews perpetrated uh, by mobs of German Christians uh, of the People's Crusade. Uh, these massacres are first seen in a sequence of anti-Semitic events in Europe which culminated in the Holocaust. We have the, 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 Bar, the Bar Kokhba revolt. Uh, the Bar Kokhba revolt was crushed by the Roman Emperor Hadrian. The city of Bitar, the Jews' last stand against the Romans, was captured and liquidated. Over 100,000 Jews were slaughtered. In 1290, the Jewish people were kicked out of England. The edict of King Edward I compelling the Jews of England to leave the country was signed on the 9th of Av in 1290. The Jews were expelled from Spain on July 31st, 1492, the 9th of Av. The edict was given, convert to Christianity or leave the country. World War I broke out on August 1st, 1914. It was the 9th of Av. The final solution was signed July 31st, 1941, on the 9th of Av, by Hermann Goering, a document designed to implement what he called the final solution to the Jewish problem, extermination. One year later, on July 23rd, 1942, on the 9th of Av, the Treblinka death camp began its operation as a death camp and continued uh, until October 1943. 870,000 Jews were murdered at Treblinka alone. So we see some of the, these are just crazy, inappropriate, and misguided uh, uses of the law by the Jews around the 9th of Av. I thought I'd bring some of them out. The following rules are, are observed on the fast of Tishba Av. Complete abstention from food and drink. Bathing is strictly forbidden. Washing of the face and hands is permissible for cleansing purposes only. The use of oils for anointing and the application of perfumes are per forbidden. Uh, any kind of uh, sexual intercourse is forbidden. It is forbidden to put on footwear made of leather. Um, one must sit on the ground or on a low stool. Um, it is customary to abstain from work and business because Tishba'a was regarded as an inauspicious day. Uh, and according to the rabbis, the person who works on the 9th of Av would derive no benefit uh, from his efforts. Uh, th another, this is, this is, found this interesting. The study of Torah is forbidden. Why? Because it's a source of joy. Except for the reading of the scroll of the lamentation, Lamentations. Ridiculous. Uh, on the night of Tishba, uh, the pious people uh, used to sleep on the floor with a stone as a pillow. Many fasted until noon until the 10th of Av. Meat and wine may not be consumed until the afternoon of the 10th of Av. So see, there's some of the, uh, I think they're just uh, crazy, crazy rules that um, the Jewish people are still abiding by today. However, we see God clearly are earmarking this day in history as a reminder first to the Jews uh, and really to all nations that to deny the Lord Remember how this happened, to deny the Lord repeatedly, and more importantly, his son, even after he was sending his son, we will see great judgments of the Lord. So some, some things to keep in mind um, on the 9th of Av. And I would ask uh, you tonight on the back table, 
uh, before you leave tonight, um, there's a one-page sheet labeled uh, Five Prayers to Pray for Israel during the month of Av. I Lord, put that on my heart to print these up. They're on the back. Uh, you're welcome to take one. Um, and I, I, I would just encourage you to pray ahead. Ninth of Av this year, I think, is July the 19th. This is July the 9th, somewhere around there. Sundown, okay, sundown a week from tomorrow. Uh, so uh, this is a good time to pray ahead uh, of, the, of the ninth of all. And uh, I just, I'm a, a big person that believes that praying ahead of something, you, you get a tremendous advantage with the Lord when you see something coming and you pray ahead of it. You don't, you don't pray when you're in it or it's gotten behind you. you a tremendous advantage when you pray ahead of it. Uh, so... That's uh, where we are in the month of Bob. And now let's uh, worship the Lord tonight. Thank him for the ability to approach him. Amen. <laughs> 